All right, we are live. So, out here for a nice Sunday morning Bixby Park session. Hopefully, we have decent reception, decent connection here. Always a uh, toss up over here. But uh, we're gonna be doing some skate tutorials live. So, I had a bunch of people asking about uh, how to do certain tricks, whether it was rolling kick flips footwork tricks, uh, pogo tricks, just a bunch of, of stuff people want to see broken down. And a lot of times it's easier to do a live stream and sort of uh, talk through it in person or through this platform rather than doing a, a YouTube video to try to break down every little thing. So I figure I can do some kind of question and answer. I've got all your comments here. And uh, <laughs> if, if you're interested in street skating and you're interested in freestyle skating, this is a good way to get into it. You can kind of learn some stuff, hopefully uh, get involved. How's it going, guys? Sunday morning, so we got some people rolling through. Should be fun, and uh, yeah, I'm gonna just warm up a bit. We'll show you some stuff that I'm be I'm gonna be showing you and uh, breaking down today, and then we can kind of see where you're at. What you think? We got coffee, definitely necessary. <laughs> oh, don't mind me. Yeah, <laughs> how y'all doing? Good. <laughs> Requests for those for uh, freestyle kick flips, old school kick flips, whatever you want to call them. We've got requests for uh, walk the dogs and footwork, and a lot of requests for actually um, no hand to truck stands and pogos. Uh, we have some advanced stuff too. We've been asking about people been asking about, but we're gonna skip a lot of the more advanced stuff uh, and just kind of stick with the basics for today. Uh, more basic stuff, at least not super intense carousels and truck transfers and wild stuff like that. But uh, let's do, let's start with a freestyle kickflip, eh? Let's do that. What is he saying? Get really bad weather. Oh, Ireland, we get really bad weather. That's a bummer. Uh, yeah, right now it's been pretty sunny. It's been hot this week. We're getting a lot, a lot cooler right now. All right, let's start with freestyle kickflips. This is a fun one. So, not like a traditional street ollie kickflip, right? Where you're gonna be popping and flicking. Freestyle kick flips, kick flips are done. Staying in the center of the board, hooking one foot under, and flipping the board with a hooked foot. So, if you can do a shove it, you can roll pretty comfortably. You can probably figure this trick out, uh, whether you're starting in the grass, starting on concrete. It doesn't really matter too much, uh, but you can always try it in the grass first if you're freaked out by landing on the board. I start with my feet in the dead center of the board, kind of parallel, pointing up the length of the board. And I use my back foot to flip the board. So people usually think this is a pressure flip where you're pressing the board down on the rail to get it to flip. What you're actually doing is you're hooking your foot under the board and flipping it over. So there's a bit more happening there. And has a bit more about has a bit more to do with timing. So I'll show you exactly how I'm doing. Like I said. My feet start in the middle of the board, right? Pointed up the length of the board, right? We call this elbow stance. I think uh, Stowe Strauss started calling it that. He's kind of made it catch on among my, my homies. So here, I like to hook my back foot, so I'm regular footed, right? So I'll hook my right foot under the board, I'll drop my toe, and I'll focus on trying to turn to the left while hooking under to just do that, right? Seems simple, but uh, it can be kind of weird with timing. So, said, start parallel, drop your toe, fucking flip. Ugh. Now there can be some issues with that, right? Because uh, it's a lot happening, right? So I'm, you notice I'm landing fake, so I'm turning my shoulders as I flip. Now uh, to do that, I'm going to be actually twisting my shoulders and jumping to the left as I hook under and flip the board. Um, I also have to focus on jumping with my left foot, the non-flipping foot, before I start hooking. So you'll see some people learning this trick. They'll start to flick without jumping off the left foot first. And it doesn't quite work. You end up 
sort of under rotating the board and doing this weird, not super good under rotation. It is super important that you jump and then flip, whether it's this trick or finger flips or geez, anything really, rail flips. If you're not getting off the board before you start trying to manipulate the board and flip it around, it's not gonna go anywhere. Um, another thing, notice that I turn my shoulders as I hook my foot. So I learned this trick landing fakie stance, right? So this is fakie for me. I'm still in camera. Yeah. Um, I think that's really helpful because as you start to hook your foot under, you can kind of turn the foot underneath the board as you turn your shoulders. That sort of simultaneous turn with the shoulders as you hook your foot allows you to get more of your foot underneath that board and get a better flip. So you kind of drive the trick to the left with your shoulders if you're regular flipping. If you're goofy, you'll be driving the trick to the right with your shoulders while you're flipping under. Hopefully that makes sense. Yeah, let me know. It's the first time doing these live ones. It's kind of fun, but I want feedback. I want to hear what you think of all this. So a couple more examples, right? Again, feet parallel. Hooking my foot under, I'm dropping my toe. I'm winding up and turning to the left. And I'm flipping. Or hooking and flipping. Landing kick. What do we all think in here? What's the general consensus? Uh, the jumping with my left foot is the part that hits, hits me the hardest, I see. Yeah, I mean, if you are maybe more comfortable flipping with your left foot and jumping off your right foot, that's totally an option. Um, I kind of show the, like, how I do it, but I know a lot of my buddies will flip with their left foot. I think Dan Garb's a good example of this. He's regular footed. He flips with his left foot and jumps with his right foot. So there are options for that. You can like switch it up. Like depending on how you're most comfortable. You gotta get your left foot strong though. You gotta figure out how to do that. Uh, can you do spacewalk? Yes, I'll get to that one in a minute. Let's see. Um, these are good questions. Uh, you should make a second channel about being a CEO and owning a skate company. I, uh, yeah, I would be down for that. If people wanna see it, I could definitely share my story. We do plenty of stuff. Uh, <laughs> spacewalks. Makes sense. Game changer. Oh, this is great. Focus on turning to the left as you flip. Yes, so that's a huge part. So being able to turn as you flip, like driving with your shoulders, leading with your shoulders as you hook under, allows you to get more of your foot underneath and really avoids the kind of awkward like under rotation that a lot of people seem to get when I've seen them do this trick. Um, all right, I'm, I don't know if one person spamming me with spacewalks, but we're gonna do spacewalks, chat. Oh, chat, I hate when people say chat. Everybody, people friends. Let's do it. Face walks. Coffee first. Oh boy. All right, face walks is fun. So this is kind of more advanced. We talk about freestyle footwork a lot, right? Kind of same trick where you're really just dancing on the board, not leaving the board too much, not really leaving the ground at all. Now footwork's all, all good and baby. Space walks can be kind of a pain in the butt though. Now, a space walk is kind of like a tic tac. However, your front wheels never return to the ground. So you're sort of constantly swooping back and forth. Now, there are a bunch of different kinds of space walks, but definitely one of my favorite tricks to do. Um, traditionally, I'll teach like regular forward space walks where you're just going to be going straight forward. Right, like, like this. Um, you can go, you can go backwards, you can go stationary, you can do reverse front, or reverse forward spacewalks, I guess they're called. The ones that like Asamu and uh, Takashi and Stefan Albert do sometimes. And uh, yeah. We're just gonna start with the regular ones. Now, uh, my friend Jacob is gonna be here later. I wish he was here because he has great examples of spacewalks and uh, I can show off his. But you can watch the videos we do all the time to see his. Um, I will start by explaining to you, you need to be able to tic-tac real well to do this trick. Now, tic-tac involves pivoting back and forth. 
I imagine a lot of you out there are trying to do some version of a tic-tac. Work on those, get comfy with them. If you can not only tic-tac, but get speed by ticking and tacking, so like pushing and pumping in your tic-tacs to get speed, that's a great tool to have and a great starting point for spacewalks. Now once you've got that down, um, spacewalks are a lot about kind of moving your upper body, your hips, so your shoulders, your hips, and your feet kind of in, in coordination to get the board to whip the way you want it to. It's easier to shown than explained verbally. I'm just gonna show you exactly what I mean. So, like it's a tap, you're gonna start space walks by turning your shoulders forward and then leading with your feet and then turning your shoulders backwards, so bringing them front side and then pulling your heels back that direction, right? And you can start with kind of a tic-tac motion, right? Really exaggerating that tic-tac motion and pushing the board farther out in each direction. And what we'll do is after you've got kind of a, a, an exaggerated tic-tac in both directions, kind of like this, notice my tail is even scraping because I'm going so exaggerated in either direction. What you'll do is you'll start keeping your front wheels off the ground. And that's kind of how I, I try to explain and try to teach these tricks. You exaggerate the tic-tac and then try to focus on not bringing your wheels back. You see how I'm essentially just leaning on the tail and like landing back on the tail to regain my balance. That's okay. I'm, what I'm doing is I am swooping front side, tapping my tail, swooping back side, tapping my tail, swooping front side, tapping my tail, and I'm sort of focusing on keeping my tail down, keep my balance. Um, there's a lot more to this trick when you're first getting into them and you're first trying to learn them. Uh, being able to kind of comfortably sit on that back, those back wheels and just get that swoop of the front side and back side spacewalk are going to be the hardest part. So uh, focus on that to start and then we can kind of work into maybe some troubles or some, uh, some tough spots that y'all have with spacewalk. How about that? But I'll give you more examples of forward traditional spacewalks first. So like I was saying, exaggerated tic tacs followed by... Tail skidded, tic tacs. And then once you've got them kind of locked, hopefully I'm in frame, they kind of get more and more exaggerated and there's less tail scraping. Oh boy, that was a lot. Let's see where we're at. I have a 30 year old freestyle skateboard. Dang, that thing is old. Let's see, makes sense. All right, here we can end. What are some freestyle tricks I can start with as a beginner with a regular board? Ooh, that's a good one. I'll, I'll work on a couple of those next. They'll be super beginner tricks. Things like maybe uh, walk the dogs and maybe a rail stand. Rail stands are a fun one that I think anybody can learn anytime. Skid plates help you when you do spacewalks. Yes, so those of you who aren't familiar, I ride skid plates on the tail of my board. Now, they, they do exactly what they say they do. They, uh, they skid when you, uh, leave, you drop your tail. So they protect your tail and your nose. I have them on my nose too. I'm getting worn out and getting razor tailed by uh, skidding them on the ground. They're also made out of this hard plastic that skids a lot easier. So while wood will grip the concrete under me, these skid plates kind of slide. And when I'm doing that spacewalk step up, sort of that tail skidded spacewalk, these come in handy. Let's see. Your spacewalks are so clean. It's like inhuman. Uh, when I do that, my upper body is like freaking out. That's okay. Okay, so that's, that's important to talk about. So spacewalks are something that you have to develop and you have to work on. A lot of these tricks aren't just like, when you've got it, you got it. I think um, what can be so frustrating about freestyle, unlike street skating or even like flat ground ollie tricks, when you've got them, you've got them. I feel like if you can kick flip, even if they're sloppy, you still know that you've got them. But like when you do a spacewalk for the first time, it might not even feel like you're doing a real spacewalk. It might not feel the way you think it's supposed to feel or look, but it's a matter of working on it and kind of continuing to refine it and get better and better. And over time, you will be happier with how they look. 
I still not happy with how mine look a lot of the time, but <laughs> I got happier with them. I got more comfortable with them. Uh, and so many tricks are like that, whether it's walk the dogs, space walks, um, a lot of footwork tricks are like that. Uh, it, it kind of, it requires you to keep kind of refining your tricks and keep cleaning them up and getting them better. Oh, that was a mouthful. Man's got too much coffee in his system today. Uh, I'm stuck on rail to one hand or to no hand 50, 50. Ooh, with butter flips, eh? That's a, that's one we might cover in another video. I don't want to get too advanced today, but we will be doing more of these. These are sick. This is so much fun. Um, probably future Sundays. We'll do more of these this style of video. Thanks for being so loyal to your fan base. Oh yeah, of course. Of course. Right. Like this is super fun. Um, Name, 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 name is a great username. Thank you for being here. Uh, how do you get finger flips to flip straighter? Ooh, that's a good one. Um, okay, so my wrist is still sprained, kind of. It's like not quite right yet. We'll cover that one soon. Okay, let's talk about rail stands. And then we'll talk about, hmm, I had some requests for rail flips. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Yeah, I'll start with rail stands because we want to talk about just quickly what you can do if you have a street board and you want to break into freestyle skating. Um, and we will go from there and some other stuff. What's up, Jacob? Speaking of Jacob, good space walks. Jacob, post some videos of space walks. Do people need to see more examples of what they look like? All right, rail stands. So I have made so many trick tips for this trip. Now, rail stands, uh, or some people call them primos, uh, I'm not going to argue with you, but I think a primo is when you're rolling or you're sliding on the side of the board. A rail stand, you're just standing on the side of the board. Now, the rail is this side of the board, the edge. So standing on the rail, rail stand, makes sense, right? Now, um, a few different ways to get into this trick. The easiest way, and the way that I like to teach people, is start by standing on the tail of your board with both feet on the tail. Notice how my shoulders are facing my nose right here. I'm like facing forward. Just like that. Now I'm regular footed, so I use my right foot to do this maneuver. So I'll take my right foot, I'll angle it on the side of the board, kind of making a T with the side of the board, and I'll press the board to the left. Now I'll put a link in the description of this video after this goes live uh, with my full like video trick tip for rail stands. Um, we can kind of break down some some basics of it, and then I can go into Q and A to help people who really need the hand this one. But uh, so I go from having my tail on the ground. Notice my feet are mostly on the ground. Actually, that's totally okay. Again, take my right foot, have it kind of lined up with the back wheels, and I press to the left. Now, important. Notice that the board kind of slides out from my left foot as I push it over. Once the board's on its side, I step up onto the wheels, boom, I'm in a rail stand. Now, you can do a lot of things from here. Ah, I can't shift in these shoes. Let's see. There we go. Windshield wiper action. Uh, you can do all kinds of stuff from the rail stand. If you want to just get out of it, all you want to do is lean into your toes. You notice if you kind of press into the toes and the balls of your feet, it'll start to rock forward. We're not going to jump. We're not going to, like, try to jump and flip the board forward. We're just going to lean forward, bend our knees, and drop back down to all four wheels on the ground. It's that easy. So, again, pushing it up to rail. That was a bit faster than the last one. And then just slapping back down. Now, the reason I like to teach you this version is because you're never jumping off the ground, right? Uh, you always kind of have at least one foot in a stable position, uh, except for when you're dropping down, but even then, it doesn't require you to jump very high off the board. You're really just kind of falling back onto the deck. Um, yeah, it's totally okay to have your foot on the ground for that one. Some people will argue that it's not, but uh, I think as long as you can make it look smooth over time, you can continue to, again, refine the trick, like I just showed you the quicker version. Uh, yeah, you can, you can do it that way. But let's see who's got some questions for this one. Anybody have requests or any issues they've encountered with rail stands? Come on, come on. Uh, how do you do a Casper to Casper? That's a tough one. Um, how do you do the Casper to Casper? I'm getting a lot of questions for that one. Marcel, that's a tough one. That's one that requires a bit of 
oh man, I've got broken fingers. That one requires a bit of um, a bit of a swoop with that, both feet. Maybe I'll talk about Casper's next. Rail flip, can you backward spacewalk? I guess I can do some demos too. If anybody has any requests for tricks themselves, we can go into those. Maybe I'll just do some demoing for y'all. So we got some requests for backward spacewalks, half cap broken fingers. I don't know if my wrist can handle that one today. So I, I like, I'd love to try though. Is that Ben? Who's, who's asking for that one, Ben Carter? Let's see, yeah. Um, what trucks are you using width and height? So right now I'm using the Ace 11s. These are Ace 11 freestyle trucks. They're, or I guess they're just street trucks, but they're minis. And uh, the height, I think is like 51 mil or something like that. I don't know exactly the height, but uh, they are 11 millimeter. One, I guess they're 111 millimeter uh, hangers, I guess. I can't, I can never tell what those numbers really mean anymore. Um, my rail flips always rotate. Uh, have a hard time doing straight ones. Okay, so you're trying to do more straight, unrotated rail flips, right? Straight ones. We can talk about that. How do you rail to rail? It's a good kind of build off of that one. How tight do you want your trucks? I ride my trucks fairly tight. Uh, I have really hard bushings. That's something that's really helped me. Um, I ride 99A uh, purple Cairo bushings, which um, keep my trucks nice and kind of stable under me. I would suggest always having something a bit more, um, a bit more stable and a bit kind of less turny for freestyle, but everybody skates something different. I think for rail stands and kind of more traditional freestyle tricks, having harder trucks or harder bushings, tighter trucks is helpful. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Uh, what's up, what's up, Pogos? You got Irish flips. Uh, man, Irish flips are a good one. I, it would take me a minute to do Irish flips. Some Tony Gale stuff. Did you see finger flips? I could do that. All right, let's, I'll do some, some demoing and then we'll come back. I wanna do some, whatchamacallit, some uh, rail flips. Straight rail flips and rail to rails. So I think a lot of people are requesting that one. Let's go. More coffee. side of the board, usually heel side, that's the way I first learned rail flips. You use usually your back foot, I, I at least use my back foot, to flip the board either straight back or in a varial flip direction. Now, I find that varial flips are easier at first to learn because the board naturally wants to rotate. If you want to do straight rails or straight rails to rails, things I just was working on, use them guys. I almost went down. That would have been great. Let's do that again. Straight rail to rail. There we go. Uh, to do that one, the uh, finesse is going to be a little bit different. The, uh, the method to get that rotation is a little bit different. Now, I usually focus on when I'm doing straight rail flips, whether they're back to rail or just straight back to the deck. So I like to have my foot a little bit farther in. The general rule is that closer to this one. The farther from the wheels or the closer to the end of the tail your foot is, the more the board will be likely to rotate in a shove it direction. I think Aaron Radrat uh, was the first person I heard explain that one. If you know Radrat, then you're doing a good job right now. Um, now, <laughs> if your foot is closer to the wheels, you're less likely to get that rotation like that. 
Um, however, the board's going to be a little bit harder to flip because you'll be kind of working against the wheels. So for rail to rails, you'll notice that my front foot, or my, my back foot, I mean, is actually right behind the wheels. Now it's like about there. Now that's doing is it's going to, I guess, put less leverage on the board. I guess. I don't really understand exactly why it's doing what it does, but um, it just tends to rotate less uh, and does more of a straight flip. Now, I do still correct that, uh, that flip and kind of um, adjust for it by rotating my body a little bit in the uh, backside direction. Uh, it's difficult to get a flip that doesn't turn at all, but uh, yeah, just focus on keeping that foot closer to the wheels and not all the way at the end of the tail. Um, conversely, if I'm doing like 360 rail flips, you'll notice my foot ends up way out here because I need to really whip it around and get the full 360 rotation. I'll show you some of those. Hopefully I fall real hard on this one. Okay, so like I was saying, straight rail flip. Totally, let's not warm up for this one. <laughs> straight rail flip to rail. Come on, Mike, pull it together. There we go. So it did rotate a little bit that way, but you can't help sometimes. You just gotta kind of adjust by being ready, turning your body a little bit. So now, on the other side of it, 360 rail flip, I'm gonna put my foot way out here. Oh, and then whip it like that. Totally. Under rotated a tiny bit, that's okay. There we go. Oh man, almost lost y'all for a minute. Learn very or learn rail varial flips. Thanks for the tips. Oh cool. Yeah. So I also have trick tips for a lot of these. I need to do a full in depth trick tip for the rail varial. I think, but we just haven't gotten there quite yet with the trick tips. Vaughn butter flips. Oh man, butter flips live would be a pain. We'll try them. Uh, I'm gonna hurt myself real bad. Probably, probably rack myself a couple of times. That'll be fun. Who doesn't like seeing some live popsicles? Anyone, uh-oh, anyone else frozen? Are we still frozen? Anybody give me some updates on uh, on big quality? Are we back? My favorite trick is the one that Kevin Harris does where he old school kick flips into multiple 360s. Yikes, that's a fun one. I wish I could do those. I've never really worked on those before, but we can try them. Cool thing about Kevin, oh cool, I'm back. The cool thing about Kevin is that he flips with his front foot actually. So. Whereas I'm flipping with my back foot and landing fakie. Oof. Whereas I'm flipping with my back foot and I'm landing in fakie stance for freestyle kick flips, Kevin would do the opposite land on his back foot and do spins. So there's always kind of benefits to switching up how you do your tricks. It opens up new doors even when it kind of closes some other ones. It's always cool to see. It would be good to do a video on coming back from uh, yeah, sprained wrist, <laughs> sprained joints, exercises, and what to avoid uh, while it heals up, wrists and heels. Yeah, it's very common. Yeah, I definitely need to come back to that. I think that the hardest part right now is I can't do so much. Um, and this, this is a great kind of moment to explore some of those things I can't do. Uh, yeah, I think a lot of it is just limiting myself. And maybe I'll talk a bit in depth about what exactly I'm doing to, to keep myself in shape. And I'm going to my physical therapist to work on that. But we'll talk about that another time. That's a really good idea. These are great. I feel like I don't usually get a chance to talk to all y'all like this. I still, still can't do regular freestyle kick flips. Ben, where were you like five minutes ago? We we're just talking about those, dude. Oh, man. Cool. All right, let's do some more demoing and then we'll work on another one. Let's see how long we've been going. This is solid. Lined up here. You guys move the camera a bit. We straight? We good?
going to regular all clip rail to Casper, huh? Puppy, cool. Baby rail to Casper, what do you think? He missed the catch. Rail cast the Casper Hick. Or just that. That's fine. What? <laughs> uh, who said butter flip earlier, Vaughn? Let's do a butter flip. No shin guard, no warm up. Let's see what happens. Should I try that one again? Let's see. Epic. Oh gosh. All right. Yeah. Let's try that one more time. So you're gonna see me pop skull on in the live stream. Can't wait. Holy. <laughs> Nothing fancy. No fancy dismount. Just your standard, uh, you know, standard flop out. Oh. Oh. Just destroy every part of my thing today. Sounds like a plan. I want that one now. Definitely want that one. Man. That's just annihilating my shins. <laughs> uh been skating how long have you been skating for uh i'm taking a break because i'm tired I'm just casually gonna answer some questions um <laughs> i've been skating for maybe 16 17 years or no 16 years now it's been a minute all right arm vein or uh i'll give that an arm vein then i'll give some tips on how i do my butter flips not the best teacher for those since I'm, you know, terrified of getting popsicle. Why are those so tough today? ready for the camera to fall. I was. Holy cow. Okay. Oh, I almost did fall. Damn. Man down. <laughs> All right. One more time. We're going to try that, that arm vein flip. And then I'm going to go into butter flips and how I knock those out. Let's do it. The arm vein flip is an old Keith Brenner trick, right? So it goes up to truck. Kind of treats it like a 360 flip out because usually I would go up to truck and then flip out like that. What he does, he goes from truck across his body and kind of treats it like a truck to truck carousel with a flip in the middle. So again, from here ah, to here. Definitely dislocated my thumb a handful of times doing this. Let's fix this camera here. <laughs> All right, so butter flips. Vaughn Johnson is asking for this one. So butter flips are a Keith Butterfield trick. You start in Cooper stance, essentially. So Cooper stance is when uh, your back foot is on your front, or your front foot's on your back wheel. Basically, you're in like, you know, only standing on one wheel. 
of the uh, of the rail. I do mine off my tail, and I kind of aim down the length of my tail. So I'm not perfectly square with my board. Kind of at like a 45 degree angle, almost, almost even farther than that. Kind of aiming away from my other set of wheels. What I do is I use my back foot, sort of press the board down, and kind of like split the difference between the angle of my tail and where my wheels are. So bring it closer. So my foot isn't going to push directly that way, and it's not going to push that way. It's kind of like again at a 45 degree angle almost down and forward. What that's going to do is going to send the board rolling, kind of rocking up and over the tail while it rotates up vertical into a kind of pogo position. It's going to be freaky because you got the board rotating vertically under you, right, where it doesn't want to be, where you don't want it to be. And uh, you're trying to land on the trucks. It's a lot. But uh, yeah, I just focus on getting that rotation right. It's kind of a, a kind of more of a ping pong pedal push, like a little fine motion behind a little little oomph. Not so much like a big swing or like pop like you would for let's say like a shove it or something like that. You kind of just have to give it a nice small push. No, it doesn't really make sense. Soft push. And then get your feet out of the way so the board can rotate under you. Saying for this one, you probably should be pretty comfortable with no handed pogos first. That is, pogoing with your feet, holding the board up, uh, and then you probably should be fairly comfortable with rail stand. Maybe even learn uh, stance rail flips first, or at least learn how to do rail flips. Uh, if you're not comfortable getting off the board, flipping the board from rail, it's going to be really hard to dive into a butter flip. But, uh, you're having trouble with these? I know, like, um, Alan Boren had taught me these ones via an old YouTube trip. And his big advice was to just get used to doing this. Like, it's gonna feel and look really weird, probably a little dumb, but uh, holding the board up and just sort of getting used to jumping onto it with, you know, with no hands, right? If you have shin guards, use those. Uh, get used to just landing in pogo and being confident, like pulling that board in and landing on it comfortably, because it will scare you. It is a, a freaky landing. Um, and uh, break it down. Work on the flip, work on getting that board vertical, and then work on doing the, the landing, that, that whole kind of caveman pogo I just showed you. You can break it down and kind of learn each part in, in blocks. You'll be able to put them all together. Hopefully you knock out the butter flip. Let's see. Try to read your comments here. I think I went off some, well, went off on some uh, pretty, pretty out there tangents for that one. We'll see what y'all think. How often do you have injuries uh, practicing freestyle? Um, I, not very often, honestly. I mean, my, my latest injury wasn't from skating. It was actually from, uh, from falling at work. So I've been pretty lucky lately, at least, not getting a ton of injuries. Um, do I know any Scottish freestylers besides Reese Arch Archibald? Um, I don't know of any. I'm sure there are some though. I would talk to Reese, see what he thinks. Um, he's a good, good contact. Um, there's a there's a ton of UK freestylers, but Scotland, I don't really know too many. Um, great work, Mike. Your tips are always handy. Thank you, Vaughn. Uh, gonna go skate in about an hour. I'll get butterflips to go today. That's my goal. Um, I like to try to truck instead of no hand to pogo though. Yeah, truck is, is an interesting one. I always struggled with that one because I found it really hard to get my foot out of the way. My, my butter flips naturally flip very vertically. So a lot of people's tend to flip kind of more sideways. And if that works for you, if that's how they flip, you might have an easier time doing it to a handed truck stand or even no handed truck stand if you've got those locked in. But um, I also can't really do that one because again of this stupid wrist. <laughs> But such is life. We are going to get through this. Crossfit very ver blah, blah, blah. Crossfit versions also a butter flip. Oh yeah, there's also a crossfit butter flip version. I know. I know. Um, Terry Senat was the first person I saw do those. He would do crossfitted butter flip to no-handed truck stand. It's just nuts. 
Um, do not hurt your legs when you're pogoing. I do hurt my legs. Um, those were not comfy. Um, I definitely have pretty, pretty beat up and uh, tough shins. I'm bleeding out of my shins right now, actually. I just noticed that. That's fun. But um, shin guards I, are something I definitely re recommend if you're getting into pogos or you're getting into freestyle in general. Um, you can get some padded kind of freestyle shin guards from some freestyle retailers out there. You decomposed sells their own shin guards nowadays. Um, BMX shin guards are great. I know there's some companies that make kind of custom foam ones that can be kind of still more breathable. I know like soccer shin guards get real sweaty. But yeah, definitely try that out. Um, do you use 97A wheels or 99A wheels? I use uh, Walt's Freestyle wheels or 99A. Let's see. Terry's one of my favorites. Terry is amazing. From Primo, how do you keep your boards stable when flipping? Kickflip style to Casper. From uh, foot positioning, focus, etc. Thanks. So I, first of all, freestyle wheels are a big help for that. So you see, I have wheels that actually cover up the axle. Now, if you are getting into freestyle, you can totally use street wheels for what you're doing when you're getting into it for, for beginner tricks. But I would say once you start getting into more advanced flip tricks, especially like uh, rail flip to Casper, having wheels that cover up your axle, not only protect the axles of your trucks, they also make tricks like rail stands way more comfortable because you're standing on more. You're not just standing on that little tiny axle nut trying to, you know, do a high wire act. You can actually like keep your foot on the wheel. Um, so that stability helps a lot. Now for rail stands to Casper, rail flips to Casper, I think you asked, right? Let's see. Flip style to Casper, yeah. So for that one, it's all about kind of jumping off of your front foot, uh, I, I flip with my back foot on the nose. It's all about jumping off your, your front foot first and then flipping. If you're trying to do all of that at once, you're not gonna be able to get the flip because you're gonna be off balance and you're gonna be doing too many things at once. You have to jump, then flip down. Um, foot positioning, not as important for the actual balance part of it, but I would say, oof. let's see, we're talking about rails to Casper, right? I would say for that one, I kind of angle my front foot, my, sorry, my back foot, my flipping foot, a little bit that way, kind of out towards the end of the nose. And once you jump, you're going to have to drop that left foot, that front foot, or uh, really whatever foot's going to end up underneath the The issue you're having might have more to do with um, maybe dropping your shoulders or just swooping that foot underneath. Uh, that's the hardest part for me at least. I hope that helps though. Um, yeah, for me what helped a lot when I was learning that one was focusing on my shoulders. So I'm, I'm trying to sh kind of shift my weight back over my back foot, my kind of pinning foot for the Casper. Uh, and that's really just to make sure that my front foot doesn't touch the ground. And I talk about that in my, my recent uh, Why Your Casper Stuff video. I'm sure they don't suck. I'm sure your Casper is great. <laughs> Let's see. How do you jump when you do a pogo? Well, that's a really good question. I will talk about that right now. So pogos are extremely frustrating when you're first learning them. Like so many other tricks, we're gonna break it down. Now, a no-handed pogo and a handed pogo are both kind of similar. Um, and how you get the, the jump, but I'm gonna talk about no, or we gonna talk about handed pogos first. Now you'll notice when I do pogos, handed pogos, my left hand is on the top of the nose, my right hand is around the side of the, the kind of edge of the board. Um, now the hand positioning is important. This is gonna keep the board stable under you and it's gonna let you manipulate the board however you want to. It's not gonna go anywhere. You've got two hands gripping it tight. Uh, you can also grab the truck. Some people do that, people grab the wheel. Really, you just want to make sure both hands are on that board and the board's not going anywhere. Now, when I'm doing hand pogos, it's kind of two motions, right? My foot is doing the jump, so my foot is jumping off the truck, just like this. Notice I wasn't hopping, I was just, or I wasn't bringing the board up, I was just jumping off the truck. And once my foot's up, what I'm doing is I'm lifting the board with my hands. So it's two motions, right? Foot jumps, board lifts. Foot jumps, board lifts. 
And when those happen kind of close together, it looks like everything's hopping together, right? It looks like it's just a simultaneous motion. But there are kind of a few things happening. Now, for no-handed pogos, it's the same idea, but you're kind of pinching the board between your feet. So the way I was taught is you have your dominant foot on the truck and to pretend that you have magnets between your ankles and that your ankles are being stuck together. And the board's going to be pinched between your ankles, right? Kind of like this. Now, same idea as the last uh, pogo, the handed pogo, but instead of doing the lift with your foot, or lift with your hands, excuse me, it's the fact that the board is pinched between your ankles that is allowing the board to jump with you. So you're still gonna be jumping off that, uh, that dominant foot, that truck foot, the same way. Because the board's pinched there, it's gonna lift with you. I definitely recommend working on the, uh, the handed pogos first before you start doing no-handed pogos. Those, uh, those tend to be a bit easier um, and they don't really hurt your, your shins as much. Uh, you can also do it with larger boards without fear of being popsicled, which isn't very fun. Best coffee, ooh, hard to say. I, there's a spot right down the street that I love. They're, they're great. Over at Bixby Park, check out Hot Java. They're solid. We'll endorse them, sure. Uh, Let's see, ways to start to learn pogos and truck stands. Uh, I, like the, I like the best methods uh, to learn first to get into them and then get out. Ooh, great. So in my first five, my first five uh, freestyle tricks video, I talk about truck stands as a uh, kind of pull up and half flip out. Now you can go back to that video to see kind of what I recommend for getting into truck stands and pogos and all that good stuff. I'll kind of break it down quickly. So, the way I learned these is I began by pinning my nose down with my left foot in regular stance, grabbing the tail with my right hand, my back hand. Now, what you want to do is learn by pulling the board upright and then putting it half rotation down. It looks like this. There's a lot happening there, right? So, you start off with your back hand on the tail and you're trying to pull the board vertical while switching your feet so that your right foot, your back foot, is on the truck. Now I'm regular stance, so if you're goofy, kind of try to reverse it in your brain uh, or something. Now, what I'm doing is I'm switching hands and switching feet, but the board is now in my left hand, my back foot, my right foot, on the truck. The dismount is done by just giving a half finger flip in the heel side direction, heel foot direction. So, once again. Now, go into more depth in the uh, trick tip that I mentioned, but I kind of break down things that seem confusing to you right now. But um, main focuses are gonna be figuring out how to switch hands. So kind of working on that motion, right? Also working on getting the board up and stepping up onto that truck. That can be real hard, and the timing for that can be a challenge for some people. All together, it looks like this. All right. And that dismount I mentioned is done kind of like a traditional freestyle finger flip, usually they're flipped away from you. Um, I like to think of it as just kind of snapping your fingers, right? You're kind of just rotating the board away from you. And uh, what, you want to, what you want to focus on when you're doing that dismount is dropping the board. So going from being super vertical, kind of closer to like a 45 degree angle. And then just giving a quick finger snap, lifting your knees, lifting your, uh, your front leg uh, and the knee of your front leg and just focusing on landing on the grip tape. Let's see. I'll show you that one a couple more times too. Hey, there's a camera rolling over here. Sorry, I just wanted to let you know. Sorry. No, I oh, don't. No, I don't care. I just want to make sure you knew that. <laughs> All right, so just so you know, you're going to be going up, 
And like I said, giving a quick half finger flip away from you while lifting your knee and dropping your feet. So once again, lifting your knee, dropping the board, half finger flip in the heel side direction, and landing. All right, see what kind of questions you have there. That was hilarious. Uh, yeah, hand and pogo, it's just a half finger flip. And again, you want to be dropping that board, so bringing it down closer to the ground and lifting your front knee before you give that little flip out. That will help you get your feet back on the grip tape more easily. <laughs> what the heck is that lady doing? I don't really know. They're just having their little Sunday picnic too, just like us. Anyway, uh, any other questions? Oh, gotta love big feet. All right, well, tips for hop off the back foot. Um, are we looking for tips for the, oh, off the truck, I see. Yeah, so for that one, I kind of talked about it earlier, Blair, but um, the best advice I can give is focusing on hopping and then pulling the board up. I think Jacob talked about kind of leading with your shoulders for that one, uh, trying to kind of lift with your shoulders as you hop with your feet. Um, if you kind of think about jumping and then bringing the board up to meet your feet, it'll be easier, uh, but it's gonna kind of happen in close uh, succession, kind of close to each other. Best ways to warm up for a session. Uh, I like to just do easy tricks, kind of dynamic stretching through the skating itself can be helpful. I am not the best about warming up and stretching before sessions. I need to get better at that actually. But um, I do think that like easy skating kind of warm up lines are helpful. I know a lot of older pros do that. They'll have sort of their go-to warm up lines. I'm a big fan of, of that. Although I might just uh, chalk that up to laziness rather than uh, any kind of science. All right, I'm gonna wrap it up there. This has been super fun. Let's see where we're at with time. Everybody who's hopped on, it's been almost an hour now. Thank you for being here. Thanks for tuning in. I hope this has been helpful. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you have any questions, any other tips you need for these tricks. Let me know what you wanna see in next Sunday's uh, live stream. So we're gonna be doing more of these. But uh, thanks as always, everybody. Keep dancing, keep being good to each other. We'll see you soon.